In 2016, Justin Verlander led all of MLB pitchers in war at 7.4. He led the American League in strikeouts and whip, as well as placing in the top 5 in practically every pitching category. Despite the impressive season, Verlander faced stiff competition for AL Cy Young Award. Red Sox pitcher Rick Porcello led all of MLB in wins and had many similar stats to Verlander. Indians pitcher Corey Kluber was in the same situation. Very similar statistics to the other two, but he also led the AL in adjusted ERA. Orioles reliever Zach Britton set the record for lowest ERA in a season by a pitcher in baseball history and put together one of the greatest seasons by a reliever ever. It was going to be a tight race. Those four pitchers were the only ones in the American League that season to receive at least one first place vote. Out of a possible 30 first place votes, Justin Verlander received the most with 14. Porcello received 8 first place votes, Britain received 5, and Kluber 3. No surprise Verlander received the most first place votes. Out of the three starters, they all had very similar stats for the most part, but Verlander stood out with his league-leading strikeouts and significantly higher war. Seeing as how he received nearly half of the available first place votes, it appears Verlander was the obvious choice out of this group to win the Cy Young. A well-deserved one, I might add. Justin Verlander did not win the Cy Young Award. How exactly does the pitcher who received nearly half of the first place votes not win the Cy Young Award? To break down the reasoning, we need to look into how the voting process works. There are 30 people that cast votes for the Cy Young Award. Each voter places votes for a 1st place finish, 2nd place, 3rd place, 4th place, and 5th place. Each place vote awards the pitcher with a number of points. A 1st place vote awards 7 points, a 2nd place 4 points, 3rd place 3 points, 4th place 2 points, and 5th place 1 point. For example, if a pitcher gets all 30 first place votes for Cy Young, he'll get 210 points. If a pitcher gets 10 first place votes and 20 second place votes, he'll get 150 points. Since higher placing awards more points than lower places, the more higher place votes a pitcher gets, the more likely he'll finish with the most points overall. Whichever pitcher gets the most points wins the Cy Young Award. However, this system can occasionally allow strange things to happen. Verlander received 14 first place votes, but only two second place votes. He also had five third place votes, four fourth place votes, and three fifth place votes. Rick Porcello, who received eight first place votes, also received 18 second place votes. That large number of second place votes helped push Porcello over the edge for most points received, and he narrowly won the Cy Young Award, totaling 137 points to Verlander's 132. We can see how this happened, but why? Why did the pitcher who received almost half the first place votes receive almost zero second place votes? At this point in his career, Verlander had 5 top 5 finishes in Cy Young Award voting, including winning it in 2011. Could this have been voter fatigue? I could see it in a way had Porcello received more first place votes, but he didn't. Verlander had almost double the amount of first place votes that Porcello had. It wasn't close. The votes show the majority viewed Verlander as the best pitcher in the AL that season, while even more believed Porcello to be the second best. What really pushed Porcello over the edge was Verlander's lack of second place votes. I said it before and I'll say it again, how does the pitcher who received almost half of the first place votes receive almost zero second place votes? Verlander received almost as many 3rd through 5th place votes as he did 1st place. I have never seen such a discrepancy where nearly half of the voters believe a pitcher to be the best while the other half believe him to not even be in the top 2. Oh, but it gets worse. Out of a possible 30 voters, Verlander only received votes from 28 of them. There were not 1, 
but two voters who did not even think Verlander to be a top five pitcher in the American League that season. I'd like to repeat that because it sounds vaguely important. There were two voters who believed Justin Verlander was not a top five pitcher in 2016. Verlander led all American League pitchers in war, strikeouts, and whip. He was also in the top five in ERA, adjusted ERA, innings pitched, and wins. Two voters didn't believe he was a top five pitcher. Had those two voters voted Verlander for third place or higher, he would have won the Cy Young Award. Who were those two voters who left Verlander off the ballot? Fred Goodell and Bill Chastain. Both coincidentally cover the Tampa Bay Rays. Chris Archer probably had the funniest reaction to the voting results. From 1st to 5th, Goodell voted for Rick Porcello, Corey Kluber, Jay Happ, Zach Britton, and Aaron Sanchez, while Chastain voted for Rick Porcello, Zach Britton, Corey Kluber, Chris Sale, and Masahiro Tanaka. Funny how the Tampa Bay writers chose AL East pitchers over Verlander. Chastain also admitted to submitting his votes early before the season ended, claiming nothing significant would happen. Because that's how voting should always work. Vote for a prestigious award before getting all the information in. Well done, Chastain. Call the flawed point system or call it carelessness from a couple of the voters, the pitcher who received the most first place votes did not win the Cy Young Award.